This is Mac OS Ken. Positive news around iPhone 14. Ming Chi Kuo drops mad thoughts on Apple's headset, and that busted old computer may not be what people thought. It is Tuesday, the 9th of August, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Ladder, smart, dynamic, term life insurance. It's no fun to think about what might happen to your loved ones if what we call the unthinkable does happen. From sending kids to college to keeping a roof over your family's head, there are lots of reasons that people choose term life insurance. If you're thinking about it, choose Ladder. Ladder is 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, and no paperwork when you apply for $3 million in coverage or less. And it really couldn't be simpler. Going through the initial screening took me less time then you'll spend listening to today's show. Ladder policies are issued by insurers with long, proven histories of paying claims. They're rated A and A+, by AM Best. And one more thing to consider. The older you get, the more life insurance costs. That makes now the best time to learn more. So go to Ladder Life dot com slash macOS Ken today to see if you are instantly approved. That's L A D D E R Ladderlife dot com slash macOS Ken Ladderlife dot com slash macOS Ken. A slowing smartphone market does not seem to be slowing Apple In fact, a piece from Taiwan's United Daily News says the Cupertino company has increased orders for the first round of iPhone 14s from 90 million units to 95 million. Working from a machine translation of the UDN article, the piece drives home iPhone's uptick while other phone makers are feeling down. At a time when non-Apple phones are generally facing inventory adjustment, the translation says... Apple expands the stock of new iPhone 14 series, which will make TSMC's high-end process order acceptance continue to flourish. Yeah, it's good for TSMC and good for Foxconn, assuming Foxconn can hire the people it needs. The UDN report indicates that the OEM has again this week increased its recruitment pay for the iPhone City facility in Zhengzhou, That seems to have been an ongoing thing. We first heard of Zhang Zhu's hiring spree for the next round of iPhones all the way back in May. UDN says the increased hiring indicates that iPhone 14 mass production is imminent. At this time of year, we don't really need more indication that new iPhones are coming soon. Doesn't mean we don't get them. Over the weekend, the Mac Observer observed a note from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman In his latest Power On newsletter, the piece had wonder marks saying that Apple has started production of its September media event. Indications are that the keynote will be 100% pre-recorded, as such things have been since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. German says Apple will push play on the keynote in the first half of September, which will come as a shock to nobody. Don't you just love a story with a backstory? TF International analyst Ming Chi Kuo is still with TF International. Seems that somebody with a Taiwanese business publication put out a report that the analyst was no longer affiliated with TF International, hence all of his Twitter posts lately. This is a false report, according to a Twitter post from Ming Chi Kuo. No hard feelings, seems to be the analyst's sentiment. Between machine translations and reading rather than hearing, though, one wonders what the heck is going on. Whatever the case, to prove that he is still with TF International, the analyst posted a screenshot of his most recent note for the firm, published on Sunday, the 7th of August. 
I then took a picture of that with my iPhone and copied the text from that picture into a Pages doc because we work in the future. That's all backstory. Here's the actual story. Ming-Chi Kuo is super excited about the mixed reality headset he sees Apple announcing as soon as January of 2023. Investors are not as excited, but he gets that. Trying to explain it to them before they see it would be like trying to explain a piano to a goldfish. Or trying to explain Norway to a dog, if you want to keep it all Apple all the time. The way he sees it, Apple ARMR headset will be the next revolutionary consumer electronics product after iPhone. Explaining why it is inexplicable, the analyst said the success of the epoch-making consumer electronics in the past, such as the iPhone, Wii, etc., was because they provided innovative experiences that people could not imagine before these products were announced and released. Therefore, it is reasonable for most investors to have doubts about Apple ARMR's user scenarios currently. Well, that's one reason. Another is the price. The TF International analyst thinks the thing will start somewhere between $2,000 and $2,500. He says Apple's not looking to sell many at that price, though. One and a half million units or fewer is his thinking. Quoting the analyst again, Apple's first-generation ARMR headset focuses on proving if the market demand exists rather than on price and shipment. If the market demand exists, the selling price will gradually decrease, boosting rapid shipment growth with improved production, technology, and cost. Less snacking for Apple these days. 9 to 5 Mac highlights a Bloomberg report that says Apple's appetite for acquisitions has slowed a lot in the last couple of years. According to the piece, Apple spent $1.5 billion on buying companies in fiscal year 2020, falling to just $33 million in 2021 and $169 million in the first nine months of its 2022 fiscal year. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says the iPhone and Mac maker used to acquire a company every three or four weeks. He sees the drop-off as a sign that the tech giant is being more choosy in the face of a shaky economy and heightened government scrutiny. Those seem like plausible explanations. Still, one is reminded of a question from the June quarter earnings call. During that, Piper Sandler analyst Harsh Kumar pointed out the valuations for a lot of companies have gone down, given the macroeconomic shenanigans and goings-on. The analyst wondered whether that put Apple in a buying mood. Apple CEO Tim Cook indicated that Apple is always in a buying mood, if it finds the right thing to buy. Not to contradict the CEO, but if the company spent $33 million for the whole of fiscal year 2021, and has already spent $169 million in the first three quarters of fiscal year 2022, that would seem to indicate at least some uptick in interest. Then again, it is a bit short of the $1.5 billion the piece says Apple spent on acquisitions year before last. Of course, it's not like they've just been sitting on the money. The company has returned billions of dollars to shareholders over the past couple of years, Additionally, 9to5Mac says German notes in his report that his figures don't include money spent on content, such as TV shows and sports streaming rights, for Apple TV+. Work continues on the next round of Apple software updates. The Mac Observer says Apple hit developers with the fifth betas of iOS and iPadOS 16, macOS Ventura, watchOS 9, and tvOS 16 on Monday. The one thing I saw turn up everywhere after the release of the betas had to do with the battery indicator on the iPhone. TMO says the return of the battery percentage indicator on the home screen jumped out immediately. It's apparently on by default in the update, though. It can be disabled in settings if you like your power consumption a bit more vague. Otherwise, the updates are just grinding and refining. The site figures the next betas for public testers will be along any time. A bit of an oops for a bank in Malaysia. 
Apple Insider says AmBank published pages to its website detailing its support for Apple Pay over the weekend. Slight problem, though. They jumped the gun. The pages were briefly visible before being taken down, according to the report, with the portal hidden from view as of Monday morning. All of that said, Apple Insider indicates that AmBank supporting Apple Pay has been a question of when, not if, for at least a few weeks. The bank teased a launch via text messages in July. The recent screw-up has the news site thinking the answer to when is probably soon. More news in a moment, but first a word from BetterHelp, online therapy and sponsor of today's show. In the past, two of the hardest parts around therapy for me have been finding the right therapist and leaving the wrong one. BetterHelp makes both of those things easier. They work with seemingly countless licensed professional therapists across the country. You answer questions about the kind of therapist you want and what you want to work on, and BetterHelp goes to work finding a counselor for you. Since it all happens online, you're not limited by who's in your area. If you've got a smartphone, a laptop, or a tablet, you've got access to the help you're looking for. Now, what if the therapist they find isn't the right one for you? It's happened to me one time in person years ago and one time with better help. Stopping with the in-person therapist was difficult. Better help makes that easy too. If something's not working out for you, if they're just not the right fit, changing is simple. No additional cost incurred. If you're ready for help, give better help a try. Mac OS X listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS Ken. That's better H E L P dot com slash macOS Ken. Get started today at betterhelp.com slash macOS Ken. A surprising development around that busted Apple computer A currently up for auction. You've heard me talk about this one for close to a month now. I've told you a few times that the thing that's most exciting about this machine is its provenance as the Apple computer that Steve Jobs used to sell the byte shop on the machine, putting Apple on the road to the stars. Funny story. Turns out maybe not. A piece from Apple Insider says that identification has been called into question around the machine. The auction house RR Auction stands by the claim and the assessment of Corey Cohen. Cohen is a board member of the Vintage Computer Federation. RR Auction calls him a world-renowned expert on Apple Ones and says the listing is properly described. We guarantee it. But a report from the Mercury News out of San Jose has Paul Terrell, owner of the Byte Shop, saying he thinks the board being sold is from the first delivery of 50 computers, not a prototype. If it was the prototype, it would have been soldered by Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. But Woz says his hunch is that it's not the board Cohen and RR Auction think it is, though he doesn't seem able to say for sure. Not surprisingly, the added uncertainty has not moved the needle on the auction, Bidding still stands at just over $407,000. I'm not sure how such things work, but I wonder now if it can actually sell for that much. The promotional push around the Apple TV Plus Skydance animation feature Luck continues, only it's not just the film or even Apple products being promoted. Apple Insider says the Cupertino company has teamed with Adobe on an effort to highlight some of the women that were crucial to producing the film and inspire future generations of creativity. There's stuff to watch and stuff to do in the promotion. For watching, the piece says Adobe released a three-part video series highlighting four women who worked on the animated film. For doing, the two companies, Apple and Adobe, have released remixable Adobe Express and Photoshop templates, 
These are said to have been inspired by both the movie and the creatives behind it. Now for next level doing, Apple Insider says Apple is also set to hold a new Find Your Voice mentorship program that'll give five women an opportunity to work alongside the film's director and other Skydance animation creatives and receive hands-on experience in character design and animation. The video features, the remixable templates, and info on the mentorship are all available on the Adobe site. And finally today, news of another original podcast from Apple TV+. Plus. I guess the plus stands for audio, maybe? I don't know. Whatever the case, the Cupertino streamer issued a press release Monday encouraging people to not miss Missed Fortune. According to the release, Missed Fortune is based on the true story of one man's years-long quest to find a million-dollar treasure hidden in 2010 by eccentric art dealer Forrest Fenn. Since the hunt began, thousands of searchers have gone out in pursuit of the treasure, with at least five of them losing their lives in the process. Missed Fortune follows one researcher over the course of eight years on a hunt that triggers a series of unintended consequences As Fenn's treasure gains international attention, people are forced to re-examine exactly what Fenn set in motion. Twelve years, thousands of searchers, five deaths. Apple's giving it nine episodes. The first three will hit next Monday, the 15th of August. You can catch a trailer for the show and subscribe if you're so inclined in Apple Podcasts or wherever else. You get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Ladder. Smart, dynamic term life insurance. Learn more at ladderlife.com slash Mac OS Ken. This show is also sponsored by Better Help. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.